Good morning all. This is Solar Cable. It's um, PV1-F grade cable. Uh, it's four square millimeters. Now that's the cross-sectional area of the actual copper conductors. And this one is made by Hikra Solar. It's double insulated. So you can see, I don't know whether you can see that, there is a blue insulation layer on the outside. There's also a black insulation layer on the inside. Now the whole point about solar installations is that you can have both high currents, 10, 20 amps is not uncommon, but you can also have very high voltages, a thousand volts DC, which is pretty nasty. So you need thick insulation and thick copper. Now this stuff is resistant in a lot of ways. It's ozone resistant, flame retardant, UV resistant, halogen free, cold resistant, low smoke, if it uh, has this, if there's fire nearby, acid and alkali resistance, low corrosivity of gases, weather resistant and low toxicity of gases. It's pretty amazing stuff really, but then it does live outdoors, gets very hot and very cold, has the sun shining on it potentially, unless it's under the panels. Even then it'll have a little bit of UV getting through. So it's got to be pretty tough stuff. Now the diameter of this is designed to fit into these things, MC4 connectors. I haven't got the metal work in there at the moment, but this is the plastic arrangement. You've got a male part here with uh, an O-ring, which seals into a cylindrical thing there so that moisture can't get in here. You've also got these grippers. And if you look inside these end caps, oh, I'll just push that out. Um, we've got a sort of rubber uh, plastic rubber probably type gripper there which will grip around the cable. There's a plastic gripper here which is designed to be squeezed closed when the cap is uh, screwed down over it. So this all grips this kind of cable into the MC4 connectors. But I've got a bit of an issue because on my solar charge controller which is here I've got these little thin cables so whereas this is a uh, four square millimeters cross-sectional area, yes, it's 0.75 square millimeters. So am I going to be able to put my cables into MC4 connectors, which is what I want to do to hook my solar charge controller up to my solar panel? Well, I've come up with a, a rather brilliant solution. It's very simple. Um, but first I want to get the crimp tool, which is this monster great thing. Now, unfortunately, I left this in the shed uh, for a couple of years, so it's gone a little bit rusty, but it still works. It's uh, a massive, sizable thing, but I, I oiled the uh, sliding parts and that's working really quite well. So shall we try crimping uh, this into the metal work, which is these things, although they're not the ones I'm actually going to use because they are, this is all new and I don't want to... Uh, use those. I'm just going to use a few of these which were left over. Um, this tool and a lot of this stuff was given to me by Jonty. So once again, Jonty, thanks ever so much for all this. I finally got around to doing something with it because what I ultimately wanted to do is put MC4s on my charge controller. So let's just give crimping using this tool a go. Now all I seem to have left are two of these uh, female metal connectors. Now interestingly, the female uh, metalwork actually fits into the male plastic so you'll guess as to whether which is the male or female connector is as good as mine. So the idea is that this slides down into these little channels here in this piece that actually swings out on a hinge and this is sprung and I suppose that's so that when the whole thing slides up there's a little bit of play in this so that it can just align itself with the jaws which are going to bring these wings around. So we close that and there's a magnetic uh, closing thing there. And you've got three uh, positions here. They are 2.5 square millimeters, four square millimeters, six square millimeters. Well, I'm using four square millimeter cable, so I should be using the middle one of these. Let's put that in there. Now, unfortunately, there isn't a perfect alignment between the jaws and the wings of this connector, which are going to be 
run up into these channels and brought across uh, on the top and in effect it rolls these sides round. In fact I can show you a couple I did uh, a couple of days ago so you can see the effect. It actually rolls, if I can get close in on this, let's do that. Uh, yeah this is better. So you can see how it rolls the wings of those uh, connectors around in these sort of spirals and that will grip the strands of the cable inside there. Now it may not roll quite that tightly uh, when I've got some cable in there because the cable will prevent it from fully rolling around but that's the action that the crimp tool ultimately performs. Now just getting back to this as you can see there is a misalignment whoops I just hit the camera between the jaws and these wings. I want to get my uh, metalwork slightly further that way. Now there are adjusters here, three little grub screws where you can adjust the depth but interestingly while that works, let's do the end one here so you can see what we're doing, while that works on the male connector and you can see that that's adjusted absolutely perfectly for uh, getting the whole of the metalwork across the whole of the jaw and you can wind that grub screw in and out. It doesn't work at all for the female connector because the female connector has a great big hole in the end and that just goes around the grub screw. So there is actually no adjustment for the female piece of metal. And the only way I can see to get that actually positioned correctly is to push this magnet away from the other magnet so I could wedge a bit of something, a bit of cardboard up inside there, but because this rotates you get a misalignment between the metalwork and the jaws. It's all a bit, well, unprofessional really. Now the next thing is these two metal wings have to push up inside this top jaw without doing this rotating round. It has to go up straight and it's actually quite hard to do. Now I think, you see again that rotates around, I think the answer is to just slightly squeeze those wings in so they push up into these and then stand some ch chance of rolling around under these top um, shapes there. So I'm just going to push that in when I try and crimp my piece of wire. And I probably should strip that back a bit further if I'm going to do this properly but it should be fine just for this experiment. So let's take that out but this misalignment of the female connector with the jaws is worrying me a bit. So I'm just going to crush that closed a little bit. That ensures that these wings will push up inside those jaws. Let's put the wire in and obviously don't put the insulation in the crimp area. Let's put it in the tool and like I say that doesn't push fully home. It's not entirely aligned with the jaw but let's give it a go now, just get that lined up. Yes, yeah, so that's gone up into the tool. Now I can close this thing right up. Squeeze that and we're waiting for the little opening mechanism to click round. That's the third position and that's clicked round. So I can take that out and that is crimped. Let's have a closer look at the crimp. And you can see the issue here, because the wings of the crimp metal didn't fully align with the jaw, it's actually torn it in half. It's properly crimped the bit to the left onto the wires, but the bit to the right was not in the jaws and that didn't get crimped. And so alignment of this metalwork here into the jaws of the crimp tool is actually quite important and this one wasn't. I've got one more actually. I'll try again and I'll try and get an alignment this time. I've got a little bit of wire here. I'm not quite sure how to cut the insulation off so I'm just going to cut it between these jaws. It's probably not the correct way to do it. But that I think, uh, yes that's worked. I've made that slightly longer this time. So I've got one more female uh, metal connector here. Let's push that down in there. Now I'll try and get a better alignment in the jaws of the crimp tool. But the only way I can see how I can get that to push fully in is to actually push these the magnet away a bit and I'm just going to actually stick a lolly stick in between these two magnets. So this is quite heavy 
I'm having trouble holding it. So let's push that lolly stick in there. Ah, but the lolly stick's fallen out, so that hasn't worked terribly well. Maybe I'll cut a piece of lolly stick off so it's not quite as heavy, but that has given me a better alignment, you can see there, between the jaws and the metal work. <laughs> let's cut the lolly stick up. Right, a small piece of lolly stick so that it uh, isn't too heavy to hold itself in between these two magnets. So I'm hoping that will hold the jaw, this um, holding mechanism, just back slightly so we get an alignment between this metalwork and the uh, crimp jaws. Let's put that in there. Oh, one thing I didn't do was slightly crush these wings closed. So let's just do that. Just so that it goes up inside the, the jaw pieces. Okay, let's put my four square millimeter cable in there insert it into the central ah oh, yeah but there's no there's no attraction between the two magnets with that lolly stick in place there is a locking mechanism there actually let me try and implement that so lolly stick between the two magnets like so locking mechanism brought round that's slightly sprung yes that's holding now let's get the connector in there the alignment now is absolutely perfect in the jaws. Let's close that up, making sure that goes up into the jaws. Hold the wire. Right, let's close this. Second position, watching for that little um, emergency opening thing to flip round. There it goes. That's done. And we'll have a closer look at that, but you can see already that we've got full crimping of the full width of this thing, not just half of it. And we can see the difference between them. The one nearest to the camera uh, at the bottom of the image is fully crimped. So the wings have been fully brought round and pressed around the strands of copper. That's tinned copper. The top one has been sort of half done and it's torn and uh, nearest to the blue insulation. It hasn't crimped at all. So alignment's quite important to get that all to work. But yeah, this crimp tool is not 100% pro. So there are issues with using this uh, professional grade crimp tool where you have to force a bit of lolly stick in there to get the female one to fit. The male one fits fine uh, with the proper cable. But there are going to be additional issues with using this smaller, thinner cable at uh, 0 0.75 square millimeters let's uh, just have a quick close-up of that 0 0.75 square millimeters as opposed to four square millimeters so what i'm proposing is in order to get the uh, copper strands crimped into these connectors i'm thinking of stripping this back having quite a long strip back in fact let's do that now like so and then actually folding this back on itself uh, it's going to be a little bit tricky but like, oh, I've cut some of the strands because I stripped it too aggressively. Folding it back on itself. So I have a mass bulk of copper strands there like so, so that that bulk will go into the wings of the connector. But this is going to make it even more difficult to use the crimping tool. But that's my plan. I'm not going to do it right now because I don't want to actually crimp this because I don't want to waste uh, these connectors. And I want to crimp the proper connectors that are actually on my charge controller when it's ready. It's not quite ready yet. I'm just planning ahead. Now, the other thing is I've got to get this cable to fit up inside uh, this connector and provide a seal in here. Well, that's clearly not going to work because that slops around and moisture is going to get up inside the connector. Well, I've come up with this. It's just polythene or PVC tubing. And the advantage with this is that you actually get to retain the color of the wire like so, but that fits inside there. And when this clamps down over it, this actually makes a very good tight seal between the yellow wire and the PVC uh, tube or piping. And so I think that is gonna solve the problem of the total diameter of the insulation and if I fold this cable back on itself, that should enable me to have enough copper strand mass 
to crimp inside the connector. So I think that's how I'm going to solve the problem. Now these housings have actually got uh, positive and negative molded into them, but that's a bit meaningless because if this is the connector coming from the solar panel and it's negative, when I connect my charge controller into there, that doesn't make it positive, it's still negative as it comes into my charge controller. So I can only assume that um, this is the connector which is on the negative side of the solar panel and correspondingly this must be the connector on the positive side of the solar panel. So now let me think, uh, the male pin actually goes in the female plastic. So the male pin is going to be negative. So that one's going to be slightly easier because the male pin works with the grub screw depth adjustment on the crimp tool. So I'll probably do that one first. What did I say that was going to be on the negative side, the black wire. And then the yellow wire takes the female metal receptacle, which needs this lolly stick offset on the crimp tool. That then goes into the male plastic that sits inside there. And yeah, so I think I'm ready to do all this. But why do I have to have all these issues? So these are the brand new ones that I bought several of, which I'm going to use for my connectors. Uh, these have had crimped old school ones, which uh, Jonty gave me. So here's another issue I just wanted to check. Um, now that's actually the wrong housing because the female metal goes into the male housing in that box of stuff. Have I got a, a spare male one in here? Oh, that might do it. Yeah, so you see the way this locks into the housing. There are some little barbs up here. So this pushes in and then clicks in place like so. Oh, that actually pulls out relatively easily. I was just wondering what would give first the barbs here within the plastic housing or the crimp. Well, in this case, it's, it's, it's fairly easy. That doesn't actually uh, barb in terribly tightly and so that pulls out rather easily. I would hope that this is the case with all connectors but there is this sort of thinking that once you've done this if you push that in and then you think oh no I didn't do so something it's too late because that's not going to come out but this one actually is fine. And it looks like you can't put the female metal into the female plastic because it's not designed to go like that. That stops you pushing that in. Uh, I've not tried trying to put the male metal in the male plastic because that's where you could get this wrong. You could put the wrong metal into the wrong plastic. Think, oh no, that's wrong. Try to pull it back out again. The wire pulls out of the crimp. It could all go horribly wrong, couldn't it? Then you've got these uh, locks, these barbed locks on the actual plastic housings. Now this hasn't got any metal work in, but I'll just push that together. But these are really soft. And it's very easy just to push your fingers on there and withdraw that. That's easy peasy. But I've got some others here. These are actually Amphenol uh, connectors and these make a much more positive click connection. If I push that in, click. That's not coming out in a hurry. And actually these are recessed inside these, well, recesses. That looks extremely difficult to get that apart. And in fact, I found this tool which does work very well. You push that into these slots and that unlocks. But I don't think these particular pair would be very easy to get apart at all, unless you had this tool. And I certainly don't have a tool for these, but these do seem much easier to get apart. But yeah, a bit of fun these MC4 connectors, aren't they? It says here, do not disconnect under load. And you can imagine why, if this had I don't know, a few amps flowing through it, but 600 volts of um, possible potential difference if you open this up. Can you imagine the arcing that you're going to get in there? You could probably get a sustained arc, like a welding arc. I actually once did um, some welding, very old video. I might try and link it there if I can find it. A very old video where I used two solar panels in series, had about 40 volts. And I was able to get a sustained arc and I actually did some welding with it. Ah, I found this other one here. Uh, this is NBJH. Is that the same as my ones? Oh yeah, they're NBJH as well. 
and I clicked the uh, female metal with its crimped wire into the male plastic and that is oh that has come out okay but the crimp the wire has pulled through the crimp because I've had to put so much force on that to pull these barbs out of um, this plastic receptacle let's push that in again oh that seems to have pulled out a load of plastic flashing in there well let's push that in again lock that in it's probably looser now yeah it has actually pulled out of the crimp a little way so yeah you really don't want to push these things in and make the barbs contact with the plastic unless you're absolutely certain you've you're ready to do so oh wait a minute what's this that's not plastic Got bits of metal coming out of here it looks like the barbs yeah they go into this thing so this receptacle actually had a metal insert in it which retains the metal connector via that metal insert which I've torn to shreds by pulling it out and yes there's absolutely no grip in there at all now so maybe some of these have um, metal grippers not just relying on the plastic hmm and I was just checking the uh, connectors that I bought which I have all the metal work for got full sets of male and female metal connectors and I've got all the plastic housings and if I illuminate for that from the back you can see that there is a metal insert in there on that one that's uh, that one what about this one yes yeah, so you can see also that there's a metal insert in there which is the gripper that grips onto this well it's very unlikely if you click that in that you're going to be able to get that back out it's highly likely that you're going to pull the wires out of the crimp well i think i'm ready i think i've identified all the issues the thickening up of my um thin cables so that they fit into these connectors the barbs the various disconnect and connect and one time things i think the uh pushing of that into there is pretty much a one-time thing the issues with this uh, professional looking tool I even had to change these screws because the one supplied with it this one was too long and it was bending that back this one wasn't long enough and it hadn't properly gripped into the plastic thread this thing actually moves up and down but it moves up and down on this side on a little spring-loaded grub and on this side of course you've got the magnets so it's it's not very convincing so I'm a little bit half-hearted about this tool but I think I'm ready to go so uh, when my charge controller is ready I can put the MC4s on but for the moment cheerio